Hello, my name is Mara Linsky Deegan, and I am the Associate Curator and Registrar here at the Charles H. McKnight Art Museum in Mason City, Iowa. And today we're going to be talking about the artist Janet Fish. And we have a wonderful piece here, um, Watermelon and Peaches, which we'll talk about a little bit in just a minute. But before we talk about her artwork, I thought I'd give you a little bit of information about Janet Fish herself. So she was born in 1938 in Boston, Massachusetts. And she grew up there um, as a younger child, but then when she was 10 years old, her whole family moved to Bermuda. And that's actually where she grew up from the age of 10 on, which I think is kind of cool. And she was from a very artistic family. Her father was an art history professor and her mother was a sculptor. And she also had a sister and a grandfather who were artists. And then actually some other people in her family that were in the arts. And so from a very young age, she said, the arts is what I love, and the arts is what I want to do with my life. Uh, she attended Smith College, uh, where she studied sculpture and printmaking. Uh, I think originally she wanted to become a potter or a sculptor like her mother, and um, but she was also interested in printmaking and wanted to kind of diversify a little bit. So uh, she studied there, and in 1960 she was able to get her Bachelor of Arts. Um, from Smith College and um, she did some summer internships both while she was at Smith College and just after um, at the Art Student League and at the Skohegan School of Art. After her studies at Smith College she decided that she wanted to continue with her arts education and she actually from 1960 to 1963 she went to Yale University. And while she was there, um, she decided to shift her focus from um, more pottery sculpture to more painting, drawing, and um, 2D work. And so she really decided that that's kind of what she wanted to focus on, so she'd take some introductory classes. And actually, one of the interesting things is she took her uh, introductory painting class from another artist that we have in our collection. Uh, his name is Alex Katz. And we actually have a video on him as well. So when you're done watching this video, if you want to watch a little bit about Alex Katz, you can kind of maybe compare some of her artwork to his because he was her first um, painting teacher in her introductory class, which I think is kind of cool. Um, but she really decided that that's what she liked, that's what she wanted to focus on. So she made the switch from more 3D to more 2D. And um, most of the things that you see uh, by Janet Fish are going to be 2D pieces, especially watercolor. Um, when she was in school, um, one of the big things that almost everybody was really focused on because it was a, a new, exciting idea was something called the Abstract Expressionism. And this is a group of artists who um, kind of started doing uh, their abstract expressionism in the 1950s and then into the 1960s. And remember, her schooling was starting just at the beginning of the 1960s when abstract expressionism was still pretty popular. And abstract expressionists really like to focus on the art of making something. So it wasn't necessarily the finished product that they were so interested in, it was their um, movement and the way they put the paint down and um, the way their hand guided everything that was really important. A lot of abstract expressionists would actually videotape and photograph them making their paintings and that's what was kind of important. And a lot of their work was very abstract, which what that means is that instead of looking like this, when you look at this, you can definitely see there's a watermelon, there's some peaches, it's on a plate, on a placemat. Um, a lot of times abstract pieces, it doesn't look like anything, it's just the color and the paint that you see and not any shapes or um, designs or faces or anything like that. So it's very abstract. Um, Janet Fish said, you know what, she took a couple classes in abstract expressionism, that's what a lot of people were teaching, and she said, you know what, this is not for me. Um, I like to paint and make things that look like stuff from real life. And so that's what I'm going to focus on. And that's what she did focus on. So another um, kind of way of painting and creating that was kind of coming around in the 1960s was something called photorealism. And what photorealist painters did is they would take a photograph of something and then they would recreate it. Uh, a lot of times using acrylic or oil paints, sometimes even colored pencil, and they would recreate it little bit by little bit so that when they were done, it looked almost exactly 
exactly like the photograph. Like you couldn't tell the difference. And some of them, if you've ever seen a photorealistic painting, they're amazing. They really do look like a photograph. Now, a lot of people think, oh, Janet Fish is a photorealist because it looks pretty realistic, almost lifelike, like you would reach out and grab those watermelons or um, one of those peaches. But Janet Fish didn't want to be called a photorealist because what she was doing was different. She didn't take a photograph and recreate it exactly just the way the photograph was. She liked to be able to be in control of where things were located in her piece. So she wouldn't necessarily say, oh, I took a photograph and here are the watermelon slices. They're exactly this place. She said, no, maybe I want to put a watermelon slice over here. Maybe I want to move peaches over here. Maybe if she was working from a photograph, there were two peaches. And she said, you know what? I want four. So she wanted the um, freedom, we'll say, of being able to create something that she wanted to create using the colors she wanted, using um, the media she wanted, using everything that she wanted to do. Um, and so she does not consider herself a photorealist because of that, that she wanted to be able to put her own spin on things when she created art. But it is very realistic. In fact, something, uh, a term that we use when something like this is so realistic that it looks like you can reach out and touch it is hyper-realistic, which means really, really, really realistic. So if you get up close, you can start to see a little bit of the brushwork, but if you're a little bit far away, it really does look almost like a photograph. Uh, Janet Fish is a, um, an artist and she's also a teacher and that's how she made her living. I think so many times nowadays people say, oh, you can't make a, a living as an artist. And it's definitely not always easy to make a living as an artist, but people do it. And um, she is an example of somebody who has done it. And like I said, also decided that she wanted to teach. So she has taught at quite a few institutions. She's taught at the School of the Visual Arts in New York City, the Parsons School of Design in New York City, the Syrac Syracuse University, which is in Syracuse, New York. And she's also taught at the University of Chicago.